it's so this is 18th century drama. So as I said at the start, this, this really is a primary source collection. Um, that's what the bread and butter of this resource is. Uh, it's a multi-archive uh, collection, most of the material coming from the Huntington Library. And really the bulk of this material uh, comes from the John Larp um, play collection and was the uh, examiner of plays uh, starting in uh, 1778. And his role really was to, to examine in the, the big um, the big theatres in, in the 18th century uh, drama scene, I suppose. And what John, John Larpent did was effectively censor or check all of these plays. And we've managed to acquire his, his personal archive of all of these plays. Um, 80%, 80 to 90% of this material is manuscript. There are some printed plays as well. But really the, the key um, focus for this John Larpent collection is these are personal papers with his personal notes and censoring on and letters um, you know, around the plays and why they were censored, um, why certain themes in these 18th century plays were, were taken out completely sometimes and rewritten. So for anyone looking at uh, not only the theatre and, and I suppose drama as a you know a social tool in the 18th century, but people looking at um, you know politics and how uh, how the political scene was, satir was satirised in the 18th century. This is a really useful collection for that. So there are two and a half thousand plays that make up the majority of, of this Larpent collection, but I should also say there's a set of diaries as well. Um, by Anna Larpent, who was, who was uh, John's wife. Now, Anna Larpent's diaries provide a really nice social commentary, not only to, to the plays and, and the theatre scene throughout the sort of mid to late 18th century, but also social issues during the period as well. So I've clicked into the introduction tab here. This is going to be a, a really good starting place for getting a full grip of, of what's exactly in this collection. So we can click into the nature and scope. This is going to give us a bit of introduction about who John Larpin was. There's some of the key themes as well. I mentioned just a few already. Um, so as well as having the core texts themselves and, and within that, that Larpin collection, there's also a lot of correspondence material ar around the, the, uh, the periphery of the theatre, I suppose. We can just look at some of those key themes there and also see the source archives as well. The Huntington being uh, the main sort of the main source archive for this project. Okay, let me just scroll up to the top. I should also explain that if you want a, a really easy way to jump into this material, I, I would recommend the editor's choice, uh, which is the various product project editors from uh, who were Adam Matthews staff, uh, being through and, and select their, their favourite or the uh, documents they see as important and hyperlink there. So maybe you're just starting to get to grips this resource if you do have access to it already. This is going to be a great starting place either for you uh, to get to the resource a bit better or for maybe lower level undergraduate students as well. So I'm going to head to the home page now. I'm going to run, run a few searches and just show a few key documents based on those key themes uh, we saw earlier. So I'm going to run a search for and of the world. So you can see the basic search bar in the top right-hand corner here. There's also an advanced search page and also search directories as well based on based on the metadata we've used when, when indexing all of these materials. I wanted to show the Man of the World play here. So this is one of John Larpent's plays so from his collection. It was sent into uh, Lord Chamberlain's office, which was the office John Larpent worked for and censored all of these plays. And the Man of the World was actually one of the the only plays really, I think there were 
maybe six over a, over a sixty year period refused on three times and um and it was only performed after being almost completely rewritten and this these are a series of letters actually look between Larpent's office and the author of that play um, as well as uh, the play text itself so not only do you get um you know handwritten core texts within this resource but you also get the the peripheral documentation around these plays you know the primary sources around these key texts which are you know for any scholars of who are studying 18th century drama this this really is uh, the bread and butter so once we've uh, so i just moved back one stage once we've clicked in from our search results page we come to the document details page uh, which is what you can see here it's just loaded. Now you're going to be able to use the thumbnail viewer across the top here to quickly flip between pages, uh, all of the metadata. Now one thing I should say is all this material is downloadable to PDF um, as long as it's for personal or academic use. That's absolutely fine. So you can either download the entire document uh, or just download um, a specific uh, image range citation export tool or you can save it to your own personal repository uh, within the resource. I'm just going to move to this page here. So once we find a page that um, looks useful to us, so you can see here this is actually the first page of the core text itself. And all we do is blow it up uh, using the toggle full screen button at the top here really zoom in especially with this manuscript material it's really important to you know have high quality scans and zoom in so we can read it word by word letter by letter if we need to so the reason this is interesting is this is you know quite a quite a popular play during the late uh, 18th century and because we have Larpent's plays we can see what those plays look like before they were rewritten before they uh, was, was effectively censored and made for public consumption so we can really see the raw texts um, that these sort of famous actors were were not performing as it were Yeah, that's one example of actually a play that was refused. So I'm going to head, head to the advanced search page now, actually. So a lot of the time, there, you know, the, the, the scope of this material really is vast. So I would actually say, you know, any of your maybe students or faculty you know who, who are researching in this area, if you're referring them to this, I would 100% point them to the advanced search page as a starter because that's going to allow them to really whittle their searches down and get to the material they need much quicker rather than you know running a, a basic search as such so you can see here it's all pretty self-explanatory uh, you've got boolean connectors here uh, popular searches and previous searches on the right hand side you can see word stemming and a uh, value proximity as well as well as date range and also those key themes that we saw earlier in the introduction. So what we're going to do, so I'm not actually going to run a key search, um, an advanced search, so I'm going to head back to the documents page. Okay, so we can see the full documents list here. Uh, you can filter this just by document type, so we can see a few of the document types there, filtered by some of these key themes and also the source of the material as well. What I'm going to do is actually refine by document type. I'm going to refine by play, apply that filter. I want to look at theme, look at celebrity culture and fashion, just to show you some of those themes. There we are, and I'll just click into this one here. 
So we can see actually um, full quality scan here of Garrick's um, annotated plays. And obviously Garrick was a huge figure in the late 18th century, um, theatre scene, you know, an incredibly famous actor. So having his annotated plays and, and his uh, sort of scribblings uh, is extremely valuable actually. And this is only available uh, through the LARPENT collection, this, this version anyway. You can see um, an index page there if we move along. should also say that when you're in the document viewer like this, you can um, add this to your own personal repository and just download the single page as well. So we've seen an example of uh, core play text, um, and we can also see a lot of these actors' notes, or sometimes it will be stage managers correspond between an actor and or um, an actor and a, a stage manager. So if we're looking at the workings of theatre or the workings of of drama, really, and and, and that area, that this really is a, an important resource for that. So I'm going to head back to the home page. I'm going to run a basic search this time. I'm going to run a search for handle. I'm going to look at plays uh, relating to handle. So we can actually see um, copies of all the of all of the operas, uh, the English operas that Handel was involved with uh, in the in really the early to mid uh, 18th century. And the reason I wanted to show you this is actually the rise of of English opera or the sort of acceptance of English opera um, is is a really a, a core theme that runs through this this Larpent material. And I think the Handel plays really, uh, well, the hand operas really um, give testament to that, I suppose. So if you have any scholars who are, who, who look at, are looking at English opera or Handel or, or music in the 18th century, uh, or performed music, I suppose, this is, you know, an extremely important resource and I would direct them to it. So we can click into one here. So Samson was probably, I'd say probably one of the best known um, oratorios, but really any of these, uh, any of these sort of written plays are a great example of, of Handel's work. So not just popular drama, this resource. Okay, I realize we're running a little low on time. Um, so I'm just going to head in. So I hope I've given you a really whistle-stop tour of, of some of the things in the primary source of materials. We do have these written core texts in the 18th century, as well as a lot of material on the running. So quality sheets, uh, rent bills, letters between stage managers and their landlords sometimes. There's a lot of material of what well, there is another side to this resource which I'm going to show you now. So a lot of this material is manuscript. It's um, I suppose as with with any primary source uh, database, a lot of this material feels like it can lack context sometimes and it can lack um, which causes students to, to lack understanding. So what we've actually done is uh, we've built a companion database found through uh, the, the header bar at the top of the resource. And the London Stage Database is, is one of those companion pieces. And what this allows students or researchers to do is um, basically search a very rept reputable um, publication, which we've digitized from 1729 to 1800. And we've actually um, converted all of those scans into XML 
and made it uh, searchable into a, a plain text database. What I could do here is maybe I'm looking for a certain actor who performed at Drury Lane in uh, 1755. Uh, I can do that by Theatre Royal Drury Lane, find the theatre I'm looking for, for example. Um, look for, let's say, 1735. Let's say 1735 to 1755. So whatever, 1779, there we go. I don't know why I want to change. There we are. So we can basically run a search based on that. And what this database really does is it serves as um, not only contextual information, but really a jumping off point um, into a, a, another primary source database that we've digitized alongside these LARPENT plays and these Anna LARPENT diaries as well. So we can see here, um, all performances between uh, whatever it was, 1729 uh, to 1779, and all the performances at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane based on that, those years. And what I might do is I might find a certain uh, performance that, or a certain production that, that looks of interest to merch. And what I can do is uh, maybe find out about a certain character or a certain performance, I can just click that performance, say, and that's going to refine the list even more and just show me um, performances of the morning bride at, say, during the year period, I think, which was 1729 to 1779. So I suppose how this would work in, in quote, real life is a student finds a letter or finds um, a newspaper clipping or or a piece of a censored text. And what they can then do is use the London Stage uh, database to find those performances and when they were eventually got through the censorship, who was uh, who were the lead characters, how many um, theatres were showing that particular performance. So for getting context around these performances um, around the primary sources, this really is a critical database and there are we all are also um, trying to think some more ways to visualize this core data as well so we've built these data associations which I will show you once it's loaded so using that same data set we've just seen I can find let's say actors or let's maybe say uh, works performed actually so I can find a particular play that, that I'm researching at the moment, maybe um, as you like it. And once I've clicked that play, I can see all the associated terms um, within the London Stage database. So you can see here quite easily that the Theatre Royal Drury Lane was highly associated as you like it so it was clear that it was those two big theatres Drury Lane and Covent Garden that were that were really pumping uh, Shakespeare out as it were you can see some of the key roles as well as some of the actors and some of the years as well which is extremely interesting and we've also taken all of this data and visualized it as well into some graphs We can see plays per year, all the different uh, theatres here. You can see the working actors. So you know which theatres really come into their prime at which stage and which are, are still small time and then build up. Active theatres as well. Number of plays per decade. So just some, some um, data visualizations there, which I think will really put this London stage database um, into a bit more of a, an interactive setting.
Okay, so I'm going to close that down. So just to reiterate, that really is a companion database to the LARPent plays and the LARPent diaries and all, all the primary source material uh, we've just been looking at. That London stage database uh, is, is really more of a reference tool, I suppose. It doesn't link to the primary source material itself. So uh, what, what we've uh, been seeing researchers doing at the moment is effectively just having it open as a, a separate tab like this and using it as a, as a reference point when they're doing their primary source research. So that's the way to think about this and, and direct students to it. Close that down. I realize we're just about out of time. Um, so I just want to head to performance data. So we saw those data associations in the London uh, London stage database we've actually done this for all of the metadata for the primary source documents in this collection as well which you can see in here so maybe I found a, a letter from John Larpent to uh, Jonathan Swift about um, you know his opinion on satirizing a certain duke or something like that. Um, what I can do is I know Jonathan Swift might be an author. So I could I could find him in here. I'll uh, sort this alphabetically. Uh, Jonathan Swift as an author. And I can basically see all the um, all the occurrences it doesn't seem to be that many actually, but see all the occurrences where um, that associate with the term Jonathan Swift. So let's maybe try one more setting. Move towards the top. Here I can see for Andrew Cherry, uh, there's four instances of Richard Rorton um, being associated with him out of 73. So what I can do is click into there. And what that's going to do is run a search for Andrew Cherry and uh, Richard Rorton. So maybe I can see, a set, there we are, so this may be a, a text that they've worked on together. It might be a letter between them, which I don't know. We can, we can find out. Okay, so this was um, clearly a, a play, as we can see here, written by Andrew Cherry, but Richard Rorton was the theatre manager at, um, at the Theatre Royal uh, during the time that Andrew, Andrew Cherry's play was being performed. So it's that, it's, it's, really using the data associations as a, as a starting point. And I really do encourage you uh, to, to point your students in that way, especially as there are so many moving parts to this resource and so many different document types. It's really good to see those metadata connections uh, just in plain text before you start running searches and, um, and, and diving into the, the companion databases as well. So we can see here the start of Andrew Cherry's, I think, op opera, waltz play. Anyway, just to sort of signpost you um, to an, the other parts of the um, resource, we do have an explore tab, which again is more contextual tools. They're really going to help situate those primary sources. A bit of bio about Anna Larpin's diaries. It's a nice interactive map of the theatres of London, which I can just quickly show you do realize we're five minutes over, so I do apologize for that. And um, so again, we can click into the nice images of each of these famous theaters. We also have academic essays written by our consultant editors for this project. So work very closely with a board of, of academic editors who collect the material, write us essays, and help us build the resource with us, um, build this resource with us. And the last thing I should say is we do also have this image gallery as well. So there's a fair bit of, um, visual material and what we've actually done is copied that across to a separate image gallery as well so you're you really look at this resource and you're looking for images used uh, to honor students um, 
go page or, or, or wants to look at, you can absolutely uh, pull together a group of images, put it in your personal repository, or just download them all to PDF.